Hey, welcome this morning to our devotional this morning on the book of Exodus. Today we're at chapter 1, verse 8. Now a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. A new king arose over Egypt. Leaders make a great difference in what happens. So Joseph dies, and in fact, all that generation. And what happens? We get new, of course, we got new uh, descendants from him, and then you get new pharaohs and so on along the way. Now, if you want, if you want to know the history, and you do want to know, and you want to go to Genesis, starting at verse chapter 37 and going out to chapter 50, the last part of Genesis, you can get that history. And remember there what God did for all those people. Through the Hebrew, Joseph, God saves the people of Egypt, and of course, uh, the Hebrews as well. Now remember, this is kind of embarrassing to these Egyptians because, you know, they don't need any gods. They have their own set of gods. You know, they have the, the dung beetle god, the excrement-eating dung beetle god. They've got the uh, god who is uh, represented by a frog, a frog in the river, Nile River, and they've got a whole, a whole set of gods. And so for the Hebrews to come along and, and uh, solve all this, it's not really they solved it, but God worked through his plan that's kind of embarrassing to the Egyptians. You know, and Egyptian history is virtually silent about God saving the Egyptians through the Hebrews and the Hebrew God. That's not a big thing on their list of uh, things they're excited to talk about. There comes a time when there's a new regime and, and new pharaohs in town, and, and he doesn't want us to think back to that at all. I read something quite interesting in Douglas Stewart's commentary in the book of Exodus. Egyptians believed that writing was an act of the creation of reality that written words actually brought into being the things they described. From the Egyptian point of view, writing had the power to control the forces of the cosmos to make them become what the words described. Therefore, they thought to put into writing the story of the domination of Yahweh over the gods of Egypt and the killing of the firstborn, as well as other details of the plagues and the ruin of the country, would be to fix them in reality and give them a currency and a continuation that would be harmful to the future of Egypt. So they didn't want to write it down. They did not want to put it in their history. They didn't want people thinking about that because just by actually writing it down, they felt like that was kind of like changing reality, which is very interesting because today, what do we have? There's a lot of people in your world and mine today who believe that reality is socially constructed. So how do we socially construct reality? Well, it's a group of people. They get into a consensus about what reality is and what a man is and what a woman is, etc. And if you put the right words, the right labels, the right tags, if you, if you censor or press down and get rid of the wrong ones, uh, you can really reshape reality. And so it's kind of fascinating that there's, there's this interesting uh, piece between ancient Egypt and uh, the most modern thinking today, the most postmodern thinking around us today. We're going to control your words and we're going to reshape the reality around your ears. Because basically today we're living kind of in Genesis 1, uh, not God's Genesis 1, but we're living in a time when technocrats and transhumanists are basically doing the reshape reality thing. They think if they control the words and control what's allowed to be said, they can control reality. So they're basically doing Genesis 1. They're recreating the world around our ears. Uh, but God's really the one who makes worlds. It's really these guys that are in for trouble, not God. And those who ultimately uphold God's things, yeah, we're going to be where reality is. So here's a group of people, the Hebrews, that go down to Egypt. They wind up doing forced labor, and they go from being kind of a favored group. Government favors them to top connections to Pharaoh. Now they're kind of a prescribed group. Now they're people who are being forced, doing forced labor. That's kind of like going from the top to the bottom of the ladder and how they face that. And we'll see what happens here as we carry on in our, as we review God's word. And the parallels for us, you know, the main entities in the Western world today are engaged in kind of a remaking of the world and a, an erasure of the Judeo-Christian values and replacement with their uh, new and improved values. They're throwing away the framework on which all of our civilization is built. And so now, more than ever, we need to lay, lay a tight hold on God's truth for this hour. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow morning.